Here's one I prepared earlier. These are a couple of IGBT modules that have died. There's one in its unassembled form. Um, that's usually, if you remove it from the board, that's how it looks. Um, ideally, if you have to replace an IGBT module, cut away the board so you can bolt down directly to these terminals because they get way better connection than going through the board. But I digress. Um, this is what it looks on, like on the inside. There's usually a circuit board on top, which you can see has been broken away, and the actual gates are underneath. Um, there's usually on this one there's a gel on top that helps with cooling. There's this one I've removed it, or it has been removed rather. Basically, this one probably shows it better. Um, you can see the tab where it's been machined away. That's what we're trying to um, free up on the board to bolt directly to. Usually once you do that, um, the motor controller will work fine. You're pretty unlucky if the rest of it's burnt out too. If you look closer, you can see this particular module has been blown to bits because it's actually failed. Um, this is less rare where the IGBT module itself actually burns, um, but that's what happens. It makes a bit of a mess inside and doesn't work anymore. If you're really unlucky and after cutting away um, you don't have access to a working tab anymore so it's broken just like this one is, um, the next step you can try is soldering to it. Um, the tab itself is only copper, um, tin copper, so you can solder it to it reasonably well. You need a high wattage soldering iron however because it's well heat sinked. Alright, I'm using a router attachment on a Dremel 4000. Um, at this point, I thought I'd point out that it's really important to use um, safety goggles. Um, normal safety glasses aren't sufficient because you need to stop stuff coming in from under and the sides. Um, the shavings from when using the router attachment on this plastic, it's really coarse. So if you get any in your eye, you can do you know, some serious damage. Alright, so basically... It's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward, just cut away at it until eventually you've um, got the cut lug through. Alright, so you can see here, let's see if we can get a good angle on the camera, um, I've just started to expose the um, trapped nut. Um, it's just below the actual lug. Um, basically, you've got to machine it away enough so that you can get a spanner on it so you can force it off. If you're really unlucky and you can't sort of force it off by um, getting a spanner around it and undoing the lug, then you can cut it off. Um, obviously the stud you're not going to keep anyway, because once they've got that hot they tend to... Get, oh yeah, there we go. They um, tend to corrode. Um, now the tricky thing with corrosion of course is once you get a bit of rust in there, it sort of keeps on rusting and rust is a bad conductor. Um, so you're replacing the stud anyway, um, usually getting a 10mm spanner on this end and a, um, uh, an 8mm spanner on this end, you usually get it off, um, but if it's easy to cut it, cut it. Um, I generally use an angle grinding attachment on the Dremel to do that, but we'll see. Alright, so once I've machined it enough to get to the nut, next bit is to try and really remove that dead stud. Um, now I'm just using a normal 8mm spanner and the best spanner to use for the 10mm one on the stud end is what's called a ratchet spanner. Basically, it's got a ratchet on it so you don't have to keep taking it off every time you want to do something. Uh, right, put that on there. This one goes underneath. Leave that side. Then with my third arm, I'll have to undo it. Alright, so we've got that um, stud out. The next step is to basically peel this tab back. to peel the tab back um, so that when we cut through the other side we're not cutting through the tab. So basically what I want to do is um, bolt the, 
the stud directly to this tab. Alright, so I bent the tab back, basically machined a hole, um, sort of a stud sized hole, so you can just drop it in like that, and then bent the tab back. Um, what you may find is the tab is also fairly corroded, so it may be worth um, sort of polishing it off. Um, I just used the router bit and it ended up being a bit rough, so I'm going to solder it as well. Um, but basically you just want to make sure the connection ends up being pretty good. Um, Alright, so the next step is to um, solder, put some solder on this um, copper tab so it doesn't corrode any more than it already has.